Hey there, cheap video here. Billy Mays here. No, uh, cheap video. Well, some of you remember, may remember, and a lot of you won't, because you weren't subscribed to me at that time. But in December, I had, you know, I had. Had, I had had all the problems earlier in the year, uh, uh, you know, last year, and with uh, living with uh, Tyler and the three meth addicts, and then in December, you know, I was just desperate to try to live somewhere else, and I was in uh, Eureka for a while, Eureka, California, and I had talked about how it was so nice to be somewhere that was, you know, people were so genuinely friendly. And, uh, and I was so happy. And then when I came back here, I thought, well, I, let's try to bring some of that, that same attitude. Maybe it's me. And I tried bringing some of that back here, and I seemed to experience some of that uh, uh, I seemed to experience some of that same thing when I got back here, and I thought, oh well, it's been just me. Well, there's a part of it that was just me, but other parts of it really were the place where I was living. You know, I was able to make friends so easily when I was there in Eureka. You know, every place has its problems, but... And when I came back here, I was trying to get back into the scene of things, and, uh... There's a video that I just made talking about how the gay scene has changed, and... and you know, being gay used to be fun and all that sort of thing, and just... And it was just... And anyway, in January, I uh, was trying to go to the Eagle, and they... and. They had all this incense burning there. It's supposed to be a leather bar, but they're burning incense. And I was trying to ask them about, you know, the incense. And they say, yeah, they burn that all the time. I'm like, well, okay. And then I was asking about the music. And uh, I don't really like EDM that much. And at that time, EDM actually made me nervous. It, it, it made me panic a bit. It doesn't really anymore, but at the time it did. And... So I was asking, you know, do, do they play something other than EDM here? Because I, I remember, like, especially in the 90s, this used to be a place that, you know, all they played was rock. Oh, we don't really have that. We've got an 80s night. And then I asked, you know, well, is it, is it the actual, the real, original 80s songs? And he goes, well, I mean, they're remixed, but, you know, we only play fresh music here. It's like, all right. But because I had shown a distaste for, you know, the EDM stuff, I mean, the conversation I thought was pleasant, but it, it didn't really matter. Um, I didn't like the things that are set as being the standard in the gay community in this, in Seattle. Uh, I mean, if you, if you, in Seattle, if it's a gay establishment, it's going to play, you know, that's, that's it, that's, that's it. Um, so, unless there's some sort of karaoke place. Anyway, um,
um, then he told me about the, you know, oh yeah, you can't, uh, the city ordinance says you can't do anything more than just a quick peck on the, on the, on the uh, lips or, you know, uh, they, the city says that you're not supposed to show any public affection in a place that serves alcohol. Well, it ends up, he fed me a line of bullshit because he didn't want me to come back. And then, of course, there was the, the cuff. And I really enjoyed coming there because, you know, on the, in the, the top section, uh, they had a jukebox, and I could... I would come in there and put in a bunch of rock songs. And it made it feel more like a leather bar to me, you know? Well, that bartender that I had the problem with, that I had the confrontation with, that's the reason why I'm 86th from the place, the real reason was that he treated me like shit was because he didn't like the music I played. It's got to be EDM because it's a gay bar. Can't have anything else. Might turn off some of the, the twinks from coming in. I'm sorry for seeming so harsh about that, but that's... You, you think of the gay community and twinks and EDM is all they'll want to hear. And for them, they had the opposite problem of me. For them, you know, rock makes them nervous. So, but the bar bartender couldn't just tell me. I mean, the bartender technically isn't supposed to be, you know, deciding what's being played. Any, but that's neither here nor there. Um, the bartender couldn't have the balls to tell me. Hey, you know, the kind of music you choose when you play here, you know, it's turning off some of the customers, and I don't like it, and you know, instead of telling me that, he just gave me that, flipped me that sort of attitude. Um, the goal was to make me not want to come back. The same thing happened at the Eagle. The goal was to make me not want to come back. And it just seems very just realizing how bad it had gotten and that my initial feelings about Seattle were right, which is why I felt so comfortable in Eureka. But there's something called the Seattle Freeze. I'll leave links to it in the description bar so you can see what it is. It first started really being taken note of in 2005. I saw it happen around 2002, 2003 is when it really, really kicked in. I mean, it started, it really started in the late 90s. And I don't know whether it's a coincidence or not, but it just seems that it happened once the grunge scene was completely dead. Seattle changed. People will be nice and courteous, they'll open the door for you, but fake and impersonal. Totally impersonal. You don't know what kind of person you're actually dealing with. It's I'm sorry, but it's worse than when I was in Texas. It's worse than that. The whole, well, isn't that nice? Well, bless your heart. You know, it's worse. I mean, at least in Texas, when you have those kinds of phrases, it's... Um, I mean, you memorize the phrases and you know what's what's really up, right? Um, Seattle, no, you they you did you don't you you don't have that. Fake, 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 fake. Can't really make any friends. Very hard to make friends. People are very standoffish. People don't trust anyone. And it's sad. It's sad. 
Now, it may not be this way through all of the communities, but it's certainly that way within the gay community. Sad. And that's what I've been feeling. And that's why the, uh, that's why I thought that, you know, well, you know, the, the, uh, being, being gay used to be fun. Well, that's because there wasn't this Seattle freeze thing going on. And it ends up that there's a lot of other places that do not have this feel. Now, I'm glad to know that it is a local thing. I'm not glad that I happen to live... I mean, Tacoma has kind of the same thing going to some degree. Uh, not as bad as Seattle, but I'm just, I'm living in the area that's like this, and I'm sort of stuck here. Um, but you know, I, I've got, I'm, I'm living in a, in a large house. I am, I, I, I'm not going to go hungry here. Um, my rent is, is decent. Um, ranging from 350 to 400. Um, I'm able to help out my mother. There's a vehicle available. I've been able to get some loans to be able to get things like this camera. And, you know, I'll be paying it off for the next year, at least. Um... You know, there, there's some good things about here. But, you know, it, I'm going to try to do something. I mean, since parking is already some... I mean, you go to Seattle, it's so damn expensive. For, for any of the decent areas, it's... I mean, you're gonna, you, could, you could spend $18 on parking just, just to be there for the night. So... You know, I just haven't been able to afford doing much in Seattle, and then then places sometimes have sometimes have cover charges. Um, there's the gas that it takes to get there. So I'm gonna probably take. I'm I'm hoping like once a month, I'm gonna take a Bolt bus uh, to Portland. And I've got a number of friends that are out there. I could probably stay with. Uh, you know for a weekend or something. I've got several friends there in Portland. And Portland is a great city. It's just expensive. So even if my uh, my mother's able, we're able to get this house sold, um, yeah, in order to be in Portland, I would probably have to uh, uh, have several roommates and I must say I am nervous about that idea, especially after what I dealt with last year. So, um, but you know, I'm not gonna. I'm probably not gonna be able to live in Portland, but at least I can visit it. You know, hopefully, like once a month or once every other month or something. You know, also, just just a point of note, I was uh, uh, the uh, therapist that I was really hoping for uh, gave me a call back, and uh, I'm really happy about that. Um, quite a waiting list for it, but, you know, at least I know eventually I'll be able to get some help with that. So, the co-pays are pretty low. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that. Um, so, yeah, I guess I don't really know what more to say here, but it just... 
The main thing is that I, I, you know, I was right initially about, you know, when I was in Eureka, that it really was truly a more genuinely friendly place. Genuinely friendly. Not just this, uh, oh, well, I'm, I'm being courteous, I'm opening the door for you. And, uh, uh, you know, a, a little smile if someone says, hey, how's it going, or something. You know, it, it goes be, it's, yeah. Uh, in Eureka, I could just, I could strike up a conversation with just about anyone. In Seattle, sorry, it really does still have that thing of, uh, uh, if you just start talking to someone, they're going to look look at you like you're crazy, or they'll have a slight conversation, but then the, the whole time they're trying to back away from it and all of that, you know. And Portland is at least a hell of a lot friendlier than that. Portland is decent, and I'm rambling. So, how long is this? Fifteen fifty-eight.